Hey, welcome back to the workbench. In a previous video I picked up this Commodore 64 and did a quick intro to it. This time around I'm going to look at fixing the power supply and getting it booting. So the power supply for this thing is a fairly complex unit and hard to find a replacement for. I know some people have used uh, the Super Nintendo power supply and 5 volt power supplies for mobile phones to do this but I thought I'd give it a go converting it to DC. Okay, on the DIN connector on the side of the Commodore there are pins 7 and 6 which feed our 9 volt AC and we have pins 4 and 5 which feed our 5 volt and 5 volt and then the case is our ground. So on the other side obviously our, our ground is just connected to ground. The 4 and 5 lines are connected together via a switch on the side of the case which is then used to power our 5 volt line. Pin 6 and 7, again, there's a switch across pin 6, but not across pin 7. And then this is fed into uh, two chokes. Which eventually is fed into a bridge rectifier. They then take the positive line off the bridge rectifier and feed it into a 7805 5 volt regulator to create another 5 volt rail. And then on top of that, on a 7812 or 7812 regulator, they take the output again, feeding it here into the 7812 to give a 12 volt rail, and this is connected back down here onto the AC line as well. And then they also take off here, before here, a 9 volt DC line as well, unregulated. To add more complexity to this, they also take off here the AC signal and feed that into some 74 logic. Uh, apologies via a resistor, which is quite important, not a fuse, that is a resistor. And then into the complex interface adapters, which is used there for a 50 or 60 hertz clock depending on where you, where you are. So to get rid of this AC signal we're going to need to replace this 50 hertz clock. We're going to need to provide some way of getting 12, 9 and 5 volts out over here and then 5 volts here as well. Okay so let me swap pens for the modifications. I have removed this choke here. So now I've got a pin 6 and 7 and 4 and 5 available to me so I can feed 5 volts in onto these no problem and I'm gonna feed 12 volts in here now I can do this from a PC ATX power supply But I somehow still need to convert this 12 into a 9 volt line, 5 volt, and a 12. So from this point, I'm also going to remove the bridge rectifier to disconnect these from here. And I'm also going to remove the 12 volt regulator. I'm going to connect 
the output of here, which is now a 12 volt line to where the output of the 12 volt regulator used to be. And I'm going to add in a nine volt regulator and connect the output of that into the input of the 7805 which should give us a 9 volt out and the 7805 should regulate the 9 volt down to 5 volts. To handle this here with the clock signal I did a bit of experimentation found if I uh, if I kill this resistor here pull this out and I just added a straight 555 timer in here outputting a 50 Hertz clock signal and then connect it back up onto the input of that 74 logic let's take a look inside okay here we are back at the old machine so taking the lid off once again, disconnecting the keyboard and power LED. You can see inside here some of the modifications that I've made. So here is the uh, nine volt regulator. This is just a cheap 99 pence uh, switching regulator um, from eBay. So the, uh, the input of this is the 12 volts here and then the output is the 9 which now feeds both the 9 volt rail and this 5 volt regulator down here to feed that second 5 volt line. There's 5 volts coming in through the DIN connector at the side here and that 5 volts is now feeding our 555 timer. This is another little cheapy. It actually worked out cheaper to buy this full board than it was to buy a packet of pots for me to do the uh, adjustable clock signal for this uh, 555. And uh, this now is wired and connected out across the board, in, uh, camouflage green, over to here where the, uh, the resistor used to be for driving these two complex interface adapters. Sadly, at this point, when I turned it on, we got the dreaded black screen of death. So a bit of reading and digging later, I discovered that the uh, the two most common failure modes for these is either the DRAM chips down here or the PLA. And as you can see here, I've uh, replaced the PLA with the uh, Super PLA, a uh, hobbyist replacement part, which is a uh, set of uh, programmable logic device on one side which plugs into where the old PLA would have done and this now does the uh, decoding between the 6510 processor, the VIC, the SID and the, uh, the memory and uh, sorry memory and EEPROM. After replacing the PLA I realized that maybe it wasn't the PLA that was causing the problem actually some of these chips down here when I put thermal probe on them were getting very hot um, so another suggestion was that these could also be faulty as well so I ordered a, a new set of DRAM chips and replaced those as well but this time I, uh, I socketed them rather than soldering them straight onto the board and it came back to life and it's not the most scientific approach to uh, fixing the problem but they are the two most common failure modes and the replacement PLA is around £14, $20 and you can pick up these uh, DRAM chips for around £9 to so $15 for, for a pack. So it, it was worth picking them up and trying them out in it anyway, save some time. So let's uh, put it together and boot it up. Okay, so we're back. We have everything wired up, connected. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, but I'll uh, get round to cleaning this up a bit. So we have 
a spark fun uh, ATX breakout board to connect up to a uh, ATX power supply which I have on my bench here. Uh, a little bit of perf board I've used for putting some connector blocks on to connect the old uh, Commodore power cable into the side here. So we've now got the 12 and the 5 volt lines coming out. Oddly, 5 volt is brown, 12 volt is black, and ground is blue. And I've also got on here a uh, 12 volts coming into this little uh, in car LCD TFT screen here. So if we turn the switcher on here, power supply comes on, a little TFT is available, and then if we power up the Commodore, she should come alive. There she is. You'll be able to do the classic. Do it right. Space bar's a bit sticky. There she is. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.